when you're implementing a Kanban strategy, we're effectively creating a, a pool-based system of work. So um, Kanban kind of does this, this, this three core practices to Kanban, defining and visualizing your workflow, actively managing items in that workflow, and then improving that workflow. And our ability to define and visualize that workflow is part of creating that Kanban system. We need to decide what is the system that we're going to use Kanban, a Kanban strategy to monitor, right? So we define generally, and you'll see this a lot with teams is they'll define columns. If they just stop there, it's probably not a Kanban system yet, right? It's not a Kanban strategy if they just define the columns and then we're done. There's a little bit more to it than that. And some of the minimum things uh, uh, that you kind of need, at a minimum, you should have whip limits, right? At absolute minimum, you should have whip limits. There's other things we should have, but definitely, if you don't have whip limits, definitely not, not don't have a Kanban system yet. But what we're able to do is we're able to decide what are the stages that our work flows through but we also want to think about what are our weight states. And weight states are places where work stops because the next thing that needs to happen, the next activity, the next stage in the process is, um, is full, right? There's no, no capacity. If you think about, um, I'm trying to, trying to think of a, of a good example. Good example is uh, if you go to the hospital and you go to the waiting room and there are no seats left, quite often there'll be a, a, another overflow waiting room uh, where, where people can go and wait to get into that, that, that situation. And then the people running that department in the hospital are going to be looking at, well, how many people end up? in this overflow they're they're all wait they're they're waiting longer than we expect because everybody's waiting longer than we expect and we don't want too many things in the system perhaps we need to reduce the number of people that we uh, uh, book on a particular schedule right in order to maximize minimize the amount of time people wait and maximize the amount of people we get through the system um, and they, well, it's more difficult for hospitals because they have to take into account people that cancel, people that don't turn up, all of those kind of things. So, um, yeah, that's that's fun. But this this idea of um, the wait state is really important. So quite often for a stage, let's let, let's use a really simple visualization uh, where you've got some kind of analysis discovery happens, then some sort of uh, development or doing happens and then some kind of validation or testing happens and then things are finished. You want to be able to indicate on your board in your visualization in your system, visualizing your system, when things are complete from the perspective of analysis, right? Um, but they've we've not yet started development doing work on it. So if the analysis team just put it into the development teams, and I'm using teams badly here, but the people doing analysis put it into the backlog of the people doing development, they're committing to that work on that other group's behalf, right? They're putting it in their system inside of their view um, without permission, they're just put, dropping it in there. Even if they ask, they're they're kind of pushing that system. That's a push system. If we want to create a pool system, then the folks in the stage before, so in this case, analysis, they want to kind of have an analysis doing and an analysis done indication. And that analysis done is a wait state for the 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 the, the, the next stage to look at that list of things that are done from the previous stage and then pull them in, but it still counts as time in that previous stage. That way we can see when, visually, see when work piles up and see when we need to do something about it, like the overflow in the waiting room at the hospital. We want to be able to take action, right? We want to actively manage the items in the workflow, which means we're going to be looking for those wait states. We're going to be looking for work piling up 
And you might find if we're limiting work in process, which we should be in a Kanban system, then if the, the, the development activity has four things that they can take and the analysis activity has four things, then perhaps the analysis work stops because they have four things in done and the development activity has four things in progress slash done and we can't take on any more and analysis can't take any more because their whip limit is four and they then stop working and they say to the system we don't have anything left to do we we can't start new work because we don't have room in our system right and you might think that well surely they can just take on something else but what if they keep doing that and don't stop and put up the flag and alert that we've stopped work? What if they just keep going? So they keep pulling work and dropping it into their done column and their done column just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And perhaps the next stage can't pull from that list very quickly. And it means that the wait time the amount of total time in the system for all of those things that are in that wait state is getting longer and longer and longer and it's just waste. Wouldn't it be better if though that group in analysis just put up the red flag and said, uh, we've stopped because we've got no more room in our system. The next stage has not filtered more down. What should we do, right? Now, in reality, if you're an engineering team working together, perhaps they go help the next stage down the line, line, right? Maybe they can help out and help make that faster. Or perhaps we need to bring this up as a, a bigger thing for leadership and say, we've got some kind of problem in the system and we need to change the system in order to make it more effective. So the things that we bring into the system flow through the system more quickly. So by creating a pool system, um, we actually create a system within which we can see, we can visually see when we're not, when the system's not flowing properly, when the engine's not working properly, it will back up and it will back up all the way to a point where we're like, okay, everybody in this line of all, every single activity is, is effectively blocked, right? It's not a blocked thing, but everything is constrained. And then, oh, this is where it's constrained because they are still working and everybody after them has stopped. What's the problem? Do we not have enough people here to be able to process the amount of work that's going on? Um, are we taking on too much work into the system so it's flowing through too quickly for this, whatever the constraint is in this area? And we need to figure out what it is and go fix it. So this dynamic applies both for a Kanban strategy, right? You want to be looking for those stages and thinking about how do we visualize them, uh, but it also applies in the, the Scrum world as well. Scrum has a wait state uh, built in um, because the developers select work during sprint planning, right? So that's their moment for, for pulling work into the system and then the system runs and we see what comes out the other end. So we can apply a Kanban strategy on top of that as well in addition to uh, the work limited pool system that's implemented by Scrum and add additional work limited pool systems so that inside of the system that Scrum creates, we can break it up into other activities that in order allow us to see what's going on in those activities and where within the system that's implemented by Scrum, where the actual activities are, are, are blocked, are stuck, are constrained, that we need to take action and we need to fulfill that final part of a Kanban strategy, uh, which is improving the workflow, not just actively managing it, but improving it. So we need to go uh, take action and make a change. If you're struggling to create a pool-based system of work, then we can help you. We provide world cast Kanban training from Pro Kanban, as well as consulting and coaching for teams trying to implement a Kanban strategy. If you're a Scrum team, then we always recommend bringing in flow metrics as a complementary practice and have Kanban classes from Scrum.org as well.